All right, this is a ride review for the 2019 Kawasaki KLX 250. Pretty similar to the rest of the years that they made the KLX 250, though they started adding fuel injection, which made it a little bit easier to start and uh, easier to program so you don't have to re-jet it. You don't have to pull the carburetor off. You can just re-jet it with a programmer, which we've done, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. It's got this cool techno color scheme. It's techno camo, I guess, something like that. I love it. it sounds looks cool. Not too many mods to this bike. We're going to give it a little uh, test ride here and uh, see what we think of it. Uh, I ooh, forgot one thing here, and that is I took the little strap that's on the seat off. So there's a little strap that goes over right there, and uh, I took it off because you sit right on it, and it is a pain in the dairy air, so to speak. Uh, just take it off cause, uh, and throw it in the garbage because it really doesn't do anything anyways. You can't really pull a bike up with it. Um, so it's silly, get rid of it, and let's go for a ride. Mirrors. I like the big round mirrors, they're nice. Of course, if you take it off-road a lot, you probably end up breaking these mirrors off the stem here. And so that's not a great thing off-road, but you know, what's it, what are they supposed to do? So you can buy different aftermarket mirrors if you want. So when I give it a little gas, sounds pretty good. That's really only just from the uh, cockpit here because that sound is coming from the airbox, not from the exhaust. So it sounds really good as a rider. I think it's pretty quiet as a, you know, somebody else around it. So not super loud. Plenty of power. Okie hey, we're out on a nice windy road. Give the KLX 250 a little bit of a spin out here and uh, see what it's like kind of on the more open, twisty roads for a 250 motorcycle. There are a couple mods done to this, so the airbox has been opened up a little bit, and I got a, what is it, HJK uh, fuel programmer, adds a little bit more fuel. Just gives it a little bit more bottom end power, I think. A little bit more torquey, better fueling. There's no flat spots. And it does wheelies really nicely. <laughs> Super easily, actually. Let's see, that was a first gear wheelie. I think we can use second gear wheelies, too. Oh, not like that. Not like that. Second gear wheelie. Wow. So we're riding on the stock tires. And they seem pretty good on road, on road, off road. They're a little bit round, so they're not going to do that great. But uh, they do have some a pretty good sized lug pattern, so they're going to do okay. Dirt roads, totally fine. Sand and uh, loose rock, it's not going to do very well at all. That's just kind of tired it is. But to be able to do pretty good on the pavement, kind of cool. Let's see, what are we doing here? 62 miles an hour at about 6,500 RPM. Yeah, that's not bad. Do we bring it up to 70? That's 70 miles an hour at about 71, 7,200 RPM. That's not bad. Seems to do it, no problem. And of course you don't have wind protection, but you know, it's more of a dirt bike, so that's all right. It's a 
lightweight bike, so it handles really, you know, very light and nimble filling. You almost over, you can overpower the bars a little bit because you've got ni a nice wide grip. A good bumpy overpass here, and that's fine. Then we'll slow down here for a minute because we got this good uphill and we'll just, you know, start it off nice and slow and see how she pulls the uphill. And I don't anticipate any issues whatsoever of pulling uphills. I mean, it's just totally fine. <laughs> oh, crappy wheelie. Maybe we can do a second gear with it here. Oh yeah. Oh, oh yeah. How about another second gear wheelie? Oh, not quite. Another second gear wheelie. No problem pulling the hill, that's for sure. Sir. for 250 <laughs> it's just fun and I think uh, the cool part about riding a 250 is that it's that fun factor is so high you know on bigger bikes everything's going you got to do things a lot faster and uh, tend to take a lot more risk and this you're doing a lot of things that maybe slower speeds and just having more fun. And it feels like, you know, I've got three bikes to choose from every day. And I basically grab this bike every day because it's just fun to hop on and ride. And there's also the cost factor. You know, you, you, know, you spend twenty thousand dollars on a R1200 GS, or maybe you spend more. You could spend eleven thousand dollars on a KTM 690, or you could spend five thousand dollars on a KLX 250, or buy a used one <laughs> and maybe spend three grand. And uh, I think you're going to have just as much fun. And if you're cruising, you need to cruise down the freeway, I think you're just fine. You're not going to be cruising all day long at 80 miles an hour. But let's say at, you know, 60, which I'll bring this up to 60 miles an hour, is just super comfortable. And I think all day long, you could ride 60 miles an hour on this bike. Uh, you could ride 70 miles an hour. That would be no problem either. At 75, it starts to get a little bit buzzy. 80 miles an hour, 
it's pretty buzzy. I think at 80 miles an hour it might wear you out. At 70 miles an hour, no problem. Um, I think at like 65 to 70, I think it'd just be fine. I think you could cruise all day long. Now, is another, like a street bike's going to be more comfortable because you can have all that wind protection? Yes. But this isn't going to be any less comfortable than a 690. Any vibration you might feel on the bars on any of those bikes is probably going to be as much or more than this bike. So people that would tell you, oh, you know, you got to have a you got to have a KLR 650 to be able to go far on a, you know, you can't do it on a 250, are totally, totally wrong. In fact, I would take this over a KLR 650 because you really need to cruise the same speed anyways. This is going to get better fuel economy, and it's probably going to last longer. If you ride a KLR 650 down the highway at 80 miles an hour, it's going to use a quart of oil every 200 miles. You could ride this at 80 miles an hour all day long and you're never going to use any oil. Same with the CRF 250L. Now, it, uh, none of those bikes are you going to be comfortable riding 80 miles an hour. Not the KLR, not the 250s, none of them. You know, at 70, everything's pretty comfortable on all those bikes. So, I think that's about, you know, where it comes down to. And the fun factor is just higher. Anyways, that's kind of riding the KLX 250, all fun. Plus, I think, you know, I think you could get your friends to buy a $5,000 or $3,000 motorcycle a lot easier than going out and convincing them to ride, you know, and buy a $20,000 motorcycle. So the fun factor is going to be higher just because you can get your friends to do it. If you could all go out and buy a three or four year old KLX 250 and spend, you know, $9,000 between all three of you, uh, that's awesome. And you've got people to ride with. And if you dump it, who cares? It's not that big a deal. If you dump it on that $20,000 motorcycle, everybody cares. Well, that's the ride review of the KLX 250. Hey man, whatever you ride, just enjoy it. Uh, don't mean to bash on any bikes like the KLR 650 and oil consumption. Uh, they're great bikes too. Anyways, just enjoy what you ride, man. Have fun.